OK, good morning and welcome to this licensing and gambling committee being held on Tuesday, the 14th of December 2021. This meeting has been held remotely via Microsoft Teams due to restrictions in relation to COVID-19. My name is Councillor Walter Williams and I will be chairing this license meeting today. This meeting is being recorded and will be made available to view via the Council's website, except for discussions involving confidential or exempt items. Therefore, the images, audio of these individuals present and or speaking will be publicly available to all via the recording on the Council website at www kafili.gov.uk. I now carry out a roll call for attendance. Please can you announce yourself as present when I call out your name? We go members first. Uh, Councillor Mike Adams. Present Chair. Councillor Elizabeth Aldworth. Present Chair. Councillor John Bevan. Not in attendance Chair. Thanks. Councillor Phil Bevan. You were real good, Phil. Oh, never been on this system before, see. <laughs> I'm there, or whichever's the quicker. Okay, Councillor Donna Cushing. Not in attendance, Chair. Councillor Wynne David. Not present, Chair. <clears throat> Councillor Mike Davis. Present. Councillor David Ars. Apologies. Apologies. Councillor Denver Priest. Present. Councillor Mrs. Diane Price. Councillor John Roberts. I'm a chair. Good morning, all. Councillor Julian Simmons. Apologies. Bye. Sorry, I'm Chair, sorry. I'm coming in now. I, yeah, I yeah. am you, but I'm on the other <laughs> phone because I'm having problems. <laughs> but I am you. OK, sorry to interrupt. OK. Diane Price. OK, Councillor. Yeah. Councillor Mrs. June Stone. Not in attendance, Chair. OK, thanks so much. Uh, can I check that the following officers are present? Uh, Jackie Morgan. Here, Chair. Here, Chair, thank you. Uh, Mr. Lee Morgan, licensing. Present, Chair. Good morning. Stephen Mock, solicitor. Uh, present, Chair. Good morning. And Rebecca Barrett, committee services officer. Good morning, Present, Chair. Thank you. Can I also welcome supporting officers from committee services who are present in the background? I thank you all for confirming your attendance. Please, can I remind attendees? that if they lose connection during the meeting, please make every attempt to reconnect. However, the meeting will continue as long as the meeting is covered. Committee services are on hand and will be able to assist you to reconnect if necessary. Please can I ask everyone to keep the microphones on mute until they are invited to speak. I should also remind everyone that the chair has a discretion to remove persons from the meeting from the remote meeting, if that's necessary. If you wish to speak, please use the hands up function in Microsoft Teams. Voting for this meeting will be taken via Microsoft Forms. Uh, declarations of interest. Councillors and officers are reminded of the personal responsibility to declare any personal or prejudicial interest in respect of any item of business on this agenda, in accordance with the Local Government Act 2000, the Council's Constitution and the Code of Conduct for both councillors and officers. Please use the answer function to indicate if you have any such declarations. No hands up. Thank you. We go to item, agenda item three, Gambling Act 2005, Review of Statement of Licensing Policy. Mr. Lee Morgan from Licensing, please. Can I hand over to you? 
Thank you, Chair. Uh, well, welcome, members, and season's greetings to you all um, on this meeting of the 14th of December uh, of the Licensing and Gambling Committee. Uh, members, the item for your consideration and determination this morning relates to a review of the Council's Statement of Licensing Policy under the Gambling Act 2005. Members, you will be aware that the Council is required to review its policy every three years, and it is that time again. Uh, members, the, um, the the type of premises uh, that this policy covers uh, will include things like your betting shops, your adult gaming centres with slot machines. Um, it will cover the one bingo hall that we have in the area and the one dog track that we also have in, in Esra Munich. Members, the summary of the report before you this morning in 2.1 uh, details that our policy will consider the licensing objectives. And um, if you're not as familiar with these as under the Licensing Act, these uh, relate to preventing gambling from being a source of crime or disorder or being used to support crime, uh, ensuring that the gambling is conducted in a fair and open way, and then finally, the protection of children and vulnerable persons from being harmed or exploited by gambling. So that's what uh, the uh, Statement of Licensing Policy uh, asks us to, to consider. Members, um, three years ago, we would have done exactly the same process where we would have conducted a review. Uh, it's a legislative requirement that we undertake. And um, the revised uh, or proposed uh, statement of licensing policy is contained within your bundle uh, and which starts off at page seven. And you'll note in, in your bundle that there's, there's two numbers on, 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 um, on the report. Um, if, if I, when I say page, uh, when I say a page number, uh, that is the, the larger um, font size that, I, that I'm referring to on, on the page there, just for, just for clarity, really. So members, um, before the policy is, uh, is well, as part of the review of the licensing policy, um, we are required to undertake a consultation exercise and uh, that exercise is undertaken with relevant bodies. So people who can comment uh, on the applications, uh, responsible authorities, people like the police, the gambling commission, uh, and then with also with uh, individuals, residents, and businesses um, who some of the who will, will hold um, various licenses under the Gambling Act. So, th so that exercise was undertaken between the 8th of October and the 8th of November uh, earlier this year. Um, prior to the review, officers have also collaborated with other uh, local authorities within the Gwent region uh, in order that our policies mirror quite closely each other, but still take into account obviously the local. Um, uh, differences of each authority. So members, as part of the consultation exercise, only two responses were received. Um, these, the first of which was from a, a charitable organisation uh, called Gamble Away, who uh, encouraged local authorities to signpost um, people to its uh, national gambling helpline. Uh, and it is proposed that uh, the contact number and website for uh, gambling, Gamble Away is added to the, the Council's policy uh, this time round. Uh, the second response uh, that was received uh, was received anonymously. Uh, and that's um, detailed in, in paragraph 5.5 of the report. So I've not been able to explore really the concerns of this individual and the comments um, that were made. And the comments that were made relate to uh, too many licenses granted for too many events with insufficient staff to check and monitor. So it's quite difficult to, to understand fully really what um, the person submitting the, the comment uh, was getting at. So um, following uh, a review of the, of the policy, it was identified that um, Annex 7 um, contain, which is detailed on page 63 of the bundle, um, was omitted from uh, the report last year when the policy was last revised. That has been addressed this time round, and you'll see all the track changes in effect with with a new parts uh, R, um, which is incorporated or we, we would we would advocate is is, ad, is added to the uh, this year's um, revision, and. Um, these primarily deal with 
um, model, sorry, with the uh, mandatory conditions, uh, which are uh, um, required uh, as like within the licenses, and also uh, model pools of conditions, which license holders, licensees, or applicants um, can include within their sort of operating schedules when making their applications. So there's more sort of good practice or uh, give them a, a heads up as the type of thing we would encourage them to consider. Members, aside from that, um, there have been uh, a few address changes, a few updates to uh, the council websites, which are sort of with it contained within the, um, the the bundle. A few typos have been addressed, um, but um, aside from that, there is very little change. Uh, and I would advocate that the existing statement of policy has been effective. Um, there is a wider uh, UK government review ongoing of the Gambling Act and the Gambling Commission, and it is expected that we will get a, a white paper on that sometime. Well, it was expected before the end of this year. Clearly, that that might not now happen, but it, uh, perhaps sometime next year, that there will be a um, far more uh, overreaching review of gambling uh, in, in the UK, uh, at which point we may have to perhaps revisit uh, the policy at that time. However, we must go through this process um, um, at, this, at this point, and uh, I would obviously, um, part of my role this morning will be to commend this report to you, uh, that you, you, that you uh, would uh, consider it and approve it then before it goes on to uh, full council for ratification. Members, I know that you may have some questions in relation to the, the revisions or the policy itself, and I'll, I'll happily attempt to answer any questions that you may have uh, in relation to, to those. Um, however, subject to those, if members were content with the revised policy, that I, I know I would ask that you approve the same in order that the policy be presented before full council on the 26th of January 2022. Um, at this point, perhaps I'll hand back to the chair, uh, chair, and, and you may want to perhaps invite any questions from, from members present. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Thank Morgan. You, Morgan. Uh, we'll now open up the item for members' debate questions. Are there any questions, please? Councillor Adams. Yes, please. Yes, please, Chair. Councillor Adams. OK, uh, thanks, Chair, and thanks very much, uh, Lee, for that. And the one thing, uh, I must say it really was only the one thing, was that item that you've already referred to at uh, paragraph 5.5 .5 and the anonymous uh, um, questions or statements about uh, too many events, too many licenses uh, issued and not enough for staff to properly monitor that. Uh, I picked that up as being very, very uh, injudicious to, towards the council, making a statement like that without any specifics at all in, involved. Uh, it it's almost should, should be discounted because of its anonymity and its, uh, it, its spurious um, inclusions there. Uh, just if you could uh, answer that for us by saying that you believe that we do have enough officers to monitor any events that uh, might be highlighted when we have um, requests for, for licensing. Thank you, Councillor Adams. I, I, um, I do believe that there are sufficient officers. I, I'm looking at the comment that's been made. It's more in keeping possibly with uh, licenses for alcohol and entertainment as opposed to gambling. So I don't know if the, the person who submitted the comment w uh, intended it to be in relation to gambling per se. Um, you know, we, we, uh, we, we receive, I suppose, far, far less uh, complaints about gambling premises than we would about ordinarily our alcohol license and entertainment license premises. So. It, it, I do believe that we have um, the resource uh, and, you know, if we receive complaints about uh, any of our premises, whether it's uh, gambling, alcohol or any other license type, you know, we will respond and, and investigate those. So I don't know if that helps any. 
Yeah, yeah, I think uh, we we need to be making the, a kind of response to that kind of um, consultation that uh, we have from someone who may have their own reasons for for bringing that in. Uh, are, are we okay as far as the the, the temporary? Uh, alcohol licenses that we have uh, cropping up throughout the year for for different events uh, to be able to respond appropriately if there are complaints. Uh, yes, uh, you know, not not every temporary event would need to be monitored by, by the very nature of it. You know, it, it, it's a, a village fate is far different to something which you would have for um, potential uh, a, a rave or something. Clearly, the two things are at opposite ends of the spectrum. And most temporary event notices sometimes are only perhaps, you know, for very minor issues, whether it's to extend uh, facilities for an hour. Uh, for an extra hours alcohol or, um, you know, many of our um, via community events will require a 10 and clearly, you know, yeah. we're, we're not getting uh, perhaps adverse impact from, you know, from, you know, uh, parent and teacher association uh, events or um, the Caffini Christmas market events, you know, they don't give us uh, the, the, the cause for concern that certain ones others would. But clearly, you know, we, we um, the process of the receipt of applications would mean that they that they are considered by the police and environmental health in any case. So the protections are already there. Thank you very much for those answers, Lee. Thank, Thank you, you Councillor. Uh, Councillor Phil Bevan, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Lee, it's a beast of a report. <laughs> I'm 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 sure you're glad that it's uh, being completed and being looked at. It's a big one. I was just concerned about CCTV all the time. And on page 23 and 73 of the report, it refers to uh, CCTV and the involvement that the police have with it. Do we, as, a, as an authority, inspect as well? Do we call in and see if they're complying? Um, because I, I just think half the time, some of us councillors are, uh, are contacted by the police to look at a picture to see if we recognise anybody. Well, it's like looking as if it was somebody from Mars. You, you just can't see the definition is bad. And even when I ask the police, they never specify. I mean, they could be specifying uh, a, a quality uh, CCTV system. I know the thing that I've got on, on and my um, son put on my door for me. The picture on that is absolutely perfect. It's beautiful. And you could recognize anything. You can see car numbers and everything. So I was just wondering, do we have any control over the quality of CCTV cameras because they can be very, very important in, in, in your in the in your line of business. I, I do take your point. Um, we, we, when we visit the premises, if we if we have cause to inspect or to with or with a complaint, uh, we do get very few in relation to gambling. I would say, um, more generally. Uh, I'll perhaps talk across a range of license types. Perhaps it's easier for me to perhaps give better examples. Um, if, if there is um, at perhaps an alcohol license premises, we identify that the footage is short of what um, the local authority or the police would expect. Um, certainly that would be brought to the attention of the license holder. And again, if I had to uh, address uh, a license holder here, if there was an incident at their premises, whereby uh, you know an individual has um, not acted uh, as we would expect uh, or he has committed some sort of crime or there's been some sort of disorder arising the whole essence of having the cctv is to be able to identify that individual and that is something that we would certainly feed back to um, the license holder and indeed the applicant if people are making applications it should be of a quality that is able to identify perpetrators of crime and disorder so it is something that is taken into account and the likes of uh, the police when they consider an application for new, for new grants of let's say a betting shop or a, an adult gaming centre they would ensure that the CCTV is at a quality that is sufficient to uh, to uh, basically identify any perpetrators so I, I'm confident that, that you know that um, uh, that, that is improving. Okay, Councillor. Councillor Mike Davis, please. Thank you, Chair. Only a short one. Uh, 
I know that uh, there's only two responses to the uh, consultation, and I wondered if this is the normal uh, sort of number that we would expect. And um, also, could you please confirm uh, of the consultation is advertised, please? Thanks, Councillor Davis. Y yes, I think uh, two years ago, I think we had a similar um, response. We had either two or three responses the last time um, round. Um, so it, it, in my experience, that is, um, I wouldn't say the word normal, but that's what we get. Um, in relation to how we advertise it, we write to all uh, existing license holders uh, in the borough uh, in relation to the, those who hold gambling licenses. Those um, persons who uh, also uh, have alcohol license premises, all those persons are individually written to as well. Um, the responsible authorities who uh, make comments on applications and some and various bodies like the Gambling Commission, uh, they are also contacted uh, as part and, and co contacted directly. And, and then we have the wider uh, consultation then with members of the public, which is which is done through the um, the corporate website and is advertised, you know, via um, via our comms team. Um, and you know, this year, like many other surveys, it's been done. Uh, via uh, Microsoft Teams, so it 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 directs people to uh, if if they do wish to make comment, um, that they are able to to submit those. So that's how the consultation has been undertaken. Yeah, thank you for that. I, I, it must have been one that I missed because I noticed that um, comms do uh, send out uh, consultations. Uh, on a quite regular basis, but uh, uh, I didn't note this one, but uh, that might be my uh, error, uh, Lee, so please accept that. Okay. No, no, no apologies needed. I, I, I think I did actually email all local members as well. So just so that, um, that, that you have, you know, just alerted to, I know you see you have much coming through your inboxes. It, it's just something that we do just uh, for completeness, really, just so that, um, it's out there for no. I, I, sorry, Lee, what I meant was is that I didn't know that through the comms uh, system. Oh, okay. You know that was because uh, I, I do pick them up separate. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, okay, thank thank you, you. councillor. Uh, councillor Dever, please, please. Fine. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'd uh, I'd like to propose we we accept the report, but just before I go off there, then. Um, uh, for information more than anything, I don't know whether legal could do it or Lee could do it. Earlier on, when you started, you said we had a a, a, a record of off the, one of the charities on uh, gambling against gambling to help people who, to put it very bluntly, are addicted. I uh, I done a little cross check myself of the betting shops in my area, and I see. Uh, notices up on the wall for everything, well, from Wimbley picket to Blackbury picket to drop in lit to the lot. But the one most important thing, which I think that should be in, in, in a t-shirt, are the services and explaining to people that they have this, I believe it was a charity that, that, that you said, uh, starting off, um, Lee, that uh, we should give them permission, hopefully, if that's what you're asking for, to put their they're, they're posted up to say exactly where people can get out because if you think about it, if it's in a barber shop, we don't have to advertise a butcher. But if you're in a bedding shop, anything that's going to be done to protect people, surely it should be up in there. So perhaps I can have an answer on that. But I, I go back and say I do recommend the report. Over to you, Chair. Uh, Mr. Morgan. Yeah, I, I, th I think um, th you're right, you know, th there's various uh, uh, posters and signage within um, our, some of our gambling establishments. I believe that they do have, uh, and I, I, you know, I'll um, endeavour to perhaps, we'll, we'll do a, a sample of some of the premises then, uh, councillor, to check whether they are offering, you know, details as where support can be obtained. I, I normally, normally the uh, the premises concerned, um, they do have that available um, and and on display somewhere. But I will perhaps we'll we'll have a look at that and, and see whether it's ordinarily obvious 
um, you know, throughout the premises that um, that they are highlighting, you know, where support can be obtained. It, it is important, as you say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Are there any questions, please? Any more questions? Uh, no. So, uh, uh, Councillor Priest proposes a motion. Do we have a seconder, please? Yeah, I second. Oh, there we are. Well done, Phil. Councillor Phil Bevan, second, yeah. Thank you, members, for your comments. Uh, the vote now will appear on the screen. If you can't vote, please indicate and we'll do it verbally. Chair, that's unanimous. Everyone has voted. OK, thank you very much. So we confirm the recommendations. Uh, we've now reached the end of the agenda. Thank you all for attending today. Members, and good day to you, and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I declare the meeting closed. Sorry, Sorry. Sorry.